Welcome to the week one go-to session. This is the first of four such sessions we're going to have this month. Thanks to the people who are in attendance, I just explained how their, the turnout was pretty low tonight because I made a huge error in the scheduling of this lecture. Um, for those of you watching this at home, which will be almost all of you, um, yeah, the lecture link, actually, let me switch to it real quickly, okay? This will give me a chance to talk about uh, basic things. Like, okay, so here's our course. And this is probably more or less what you see. So I hope you've done all these getting started activities. Like, well, if you're here at the lecture, you've done the lecture registration. Actually, let me show that real quickly, okay? So preview. Right, so clicking on this link signs you up for the entire month's worth of lectures, which are always on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Um, but yeah, I made a mistake. It was set for 7 a.m. So I had to create a new link just for tonight's lecture. But still, if you click on this link, you'll be signed up for every other lecture this month. Um, we do have a spring break, which is the third week of this month. And I had no way, because it's much easier for me just to sign up for four or five straight Monday, or excuse me, Tuesdays all at once. Um, so yeah, you'll get a reminder during spring break that there's a lecture, but we won't be having a lecture that week. And I'll send out an announcement reminding the pe people that so you don't show up on a Tuesday evening when we're all on break thinking there's a lecture okay but yes clicking on this link will sign you up for all the other lectures for the month um, how about the people here we have Savannah Hibba and Juliana have all of you signed up for for example McGraw Hill turnitin.com so turnitin is where you are going to enroll and submit your major assignments okay. and it's real simple like all you need is this stuff here. Every activity has like a ton of wording, but <laughs> the important stuff is right here. The class ID, which you'll need, and the password, showers, one word, lowercase, okay? With these two pieces of information, you are enrolled in turnitin.com. And I do need you to enroll in turnitin.com. I like the features that it has. It makes it much easier for me to grade. It's also easier because everything's in one place. Um, so if people send me their work through email or through a comment left underneath an activity or as a message, like I can easily forget where or if you submitted something. So yeah, everything gets handed and turned in .com for the major assignments, which are basically these guys always at the end of each week. So we'll talk about this first assignment in this lecture. Um, uh, what else? Yeah, McGraw-Hill. Actually, let me, we're not going to talk about it right this second. Here's a website I was visiting earlier, so let me get away from that. We will need McGraw-Hill in a second. So, okay, so McGraw-Hill registration is also simple. Okay, you, you have a little video you can watch, uh, but basically you're going to click on this button here, and it should take you to information where you see my class. Okay, so there, there see my name? the month, April, that lets you know that you're in the right class and just start typing in your email. It should be a full sale email, I guess. You could put a different email, but um, I think we're I think we're told that you should use your full sale uh, email and then click begin and just follow the steps. So it should be easy peasy. Let's talk about McGraw-Hill a bit because as you see, you have, here, let me get out of this. Every week, or most weeks, I should say, you have this achieve module, okay? So it's in week one, week two, Week three and week four, you don't have one. So it's only the first three weeks. Um, the awesome thing is once you do go into turn, uh, excuse me, McGraw Hill, you don't even need to really go to FSO to figure out what your reading assignments are or where the achieve modules, which are interactive kind of grammar modules, are. Uh, because I'll show you. I can show this in the student view. Wait a second for it to come up. And you will see that, yeah, everything's already organized for you. So you never have to actually go into the book. You never have to go to FSO and say, what were the, what chapter was it again? And which pages? No, everything's already arranged for you. So week one required reading 32 pages. They're not that long, really. Like here, if I go into the reading, you will see that the reading is pretty quick and basic. There are pictures, there's stuff in green boxes. You don't have to do the things that are in the green boxes. So if it's just a brainstorming exercise or a writing activity, you don't have to do it. You just have to literally read what's on the page. Okay. And then you click arrow your way through it. You can see another big picture here. Listen, I am fine with reading for gist. Okay. Um, in other words, yeah, read it, but I'm okay with a little bit of scanning. Don't just scan writing today. 
the writer's responsibilities. No, but I'm fine with selective scanning. As long as you come away with the, the gist of the understanding of what the reading is talking about, that's what I care about. Okay. So let me go out of this. The, yeah, the reading's 32 pages, but it's a lot faster than that. Okay. We're not really burdening you with a lot of readings, but you do have these guys as well, the achieve modules. And you can see they're also organized for you by weeks, weeks one through three. So the first one, which is due, I should mention that as well. On, yes, over on McGraw Hill, it shows uh, May. That's just because it's a little bit too difficult to explain, but if I open up everything for the entire month, you can work ahead if you want. So you can start on the week two module, the week three module. If you want to bang all three of them out this weekend, you can do so. Um, so yeah, for people who want to work ahead, they can. It also allows me to see your percentage completion a lot easier. Um, but yes, the FSO dates are the ones that are correct and accurate. So as you can see, the achieve modules are always due on Friday. Okay? So the first one, the first achieve module, week one, is due Friday. And we click this to get it started. And I'll show you what it looks like. I'll answer a few questions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Waiting for it to load. Continue. <coughs> there will be a woman who starts talking, I believe. It always sends me here to help. I don't know why, but here I'll go to assignments. Okay. You can choose a study schedule. You can choose how many days you want to work, how many hours at a time. I think I've already done that in the past, so I just skipped it. Okay, so here. This is the first achieve module, so I will click there to begin it. This woman's talking. I'll silence her. I'll click OK. And you can choose how you want to go about it, like answer four questions in a row, by topic, 10 questions in a row, or you can just dive right in and complete the assignments. Okay, so I'm going to choose that. You don't have to do it in one sitting. So if you choose to complete the assignment, you can work on it a little bit, close it, come back to it. Okay, so here, in which sentence is the apostrophe correctly used to show possession? Uh, Darcy's and Howard's letters each arrived in the mail yesterday. Oh, I hate these. <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm not sure. Okay, I know this one isn't correct because there are no apostrophes whatsoever. So the question is Darcy's and Howard's letters or Darcy and Howard's letters? I think it's the first one. Okay, because there are two letters. One is Darcy's, one is Howard's. In speech, we usually say this, Darcy and Howard's letters. Okay, but the letters don't aren't owned by both of them. So I think it's this one. You can answer how sure you are. So I'm going to say I think so. Yay! And you'll see there's a little progress bar. And when I click OK, it will bump up. So I'm 2% done. Your goal is to get to 100%. Because on Monday, when I come back to campus and enter your grade for this assignment, I just enter the completion. So if you get 80% through, you receive an 80. Okay, But there's no reason why you shouldn't get to 100%, because these are pretty easy. Click on the part of the declarative sentence that contains an error. Ned wanted to know whether Lenin or Stalin was the founder of Bolshevism. Judith knew the answer was Lenin. Okay, there's an error somewhere here. Ned wanted to know whether Lenin... Wow, uh, I don't know what the error is. <laughs> Someone want to help me here? I guess it's this? Because it's not an actual literal question? Hmm, I have no idea. This is embarrassing. Usually I answer these perfectly. Ned wanted to know whether Lenin or Stalin was the founder of Bolshevism. I think it's this. I don't think it should be a question mark. Okay, but let's say I'm unsure. So I'm going to say unsure. Yay, I'm correct. <laughs> Juliana, what? You said there should be a comma. Uh, where did you think that a comma should be? There shouldn't be a comma here because that would mean we have two sentences smashed together with a comma in between. Um, if you mean like weather, comma, yeah, we would want to read that straight through. Um, yes, commas are sometimes in used to introduce things like a quotation, uh, but they're not used to introduce information always. So we wouldn't want to pause here. So we wouldn't want to read that th straight through. Okay, so I got it right because I think this is just a sentence. It contains a question, but it's not like a question question, right? I don't know if that makes sense to you or not. And we're up to 4%. Here, I'll answer one more. And I'll stop, because if not, I'm doing all the work for you. Uh, use the drop-down box to choose the correctly punctuated any of the center. 
Martha asked me, here's a good example, right? A comma leading into a quoted, either quotation or actual direct speech. Do you have the correct time? Well, this is easy. Oh, it's actually testing you on whether the quotation mark should be inside the uh, quotation marks outside or inside with a period. No, quotation, punctuation almost always, like 99% of the time goes inside the quotation marks. Okay, so I'm, I know that this is correct. Submit, correct. And look, I'm up to 6%. So yeah, I could fly through this. You just have to do the same, okay? So we've covered McGraw-Hill. I wanna cover one more thing that applies to, because week one, week two, and week three are pretty much going to repeat themselves. You'll always have an achieve module and you'll always have a journal response. So let me cover that as well, okay? Because the important stuff I've highlighted for you. So again, there's a ton of <laughs> writing, but really the important stuff is this. Uh, using quotes or concepts from this week's reading, as well as a lecture, explain your understanding. Uh, but here's the key stuff. Think of the journal entries and in, informal quiz. I need to see strong evidence that the readings were completed and that the lecture was uh, attended or watched. I recommend writing two medium paragraphs, one that summarizes the reading and one that summarizes the lecture. So yeah, that's all I wanna see. So every week, it's, it's like an informal quiz. If you can prove to me that you've completed the readings, and watch the lecture, I will be more than happy pretty much to record 100 and move on, unless they're like egregious grammar areas, errors, like really, really bad. Um, no proofreading whatsoever, or it's written all in lowercase, but yeah, I'm happy to assign an A and move on, okay? And I'll help. In week one, I tend to go a little bit easy on the grades and remind people that all I'm looking for is two paragraphs, one that summarizes the readings, one that summarizes the lecture. A good rule of thumb, if you're confused how to do that, is maybe, yeah, mention something very specific from the beginning, middle, and end of both the reading and the lecture. So you don't have to feel the need to be comprehensive over everything in the reading, okay? But just give me some sign that you've, that's why I say the beginning, middle, and end, because that kind of proves to me that you made it through the beginning, middle, and end. Um, so that's the journal thing. And, I think a lot of this course, like, okay, 5% for each week journals, each week's journal, 5% for those achieve modules. You get 10% for professionalism, which I pretty much give hundreds unless there are assignments that are missed or again, someone does something really egregious, curses a fellow classmate, curses at me. I mean, something really, really bad. Uh, but I think I calculated it. That's like 40% of the class or 45% of the class that is in your back pocket if you just take advantage of it. Make sure that you summarize the week's reading and, lect and uh, lecture, that should be an A every week. Complete those achieve modules to 100%, that should be an A every week. And that can balance things out like the major assignments. So some people sometimes get the major assignment back and they're unhappy because it's an 80 and an 80 isn't a 90 and it's not 100, but they've gotten hundreds on the journal and the achieve module and their average for the week is a 90, okay? So yeah, take advantage of those easy points. I sometimes call them gimme points. Okay, so let's start talking about what we're doing this month in class. So let me get back to my lecture. Yes, welcome to week one. Welcome to English Composition. I look forward to working with all of you this month. Um, again, we have a nice little break in week three, so keep that in mind. And the good news is the major assignments that is due for week two, I guess it is, isn't due until after the break. So you actually get like extra time to work on that assignment. So that's kind of nice as well. Um, but yes, I'm not gonna go over this. I think you can find this, I think it's under on, on the instructor, excuse me, the students view under the about tab. You can see things like the syllabus, course resources. The office hours are in that little activity where it's, I think it's called meet the instructor. Um, and the Writing Center is open 24, well, not 24 hours a day. It's open almost 24 hours. I mean, it's open during, it's open beyond regular nine to five working hours. I think the cutoff is 9 p.m. You, you do need 24 hours notice to schedule an appointment. If you're on campus, you can actually have a face-to-face -face appointment. If you are not on campus or just prefer not to meet face-to-face, -face, you can have a session via go-to training like we are now. Um, it requires 24 hours notice at a time, and it's really simple. It's just writing center, one word, so smash these two words together, at fullsale.com. 
Okay, I think you get a GPS point for doing so. Um, here's a little slide about why you have to take this class. I'll let you read the quotation and the factoid on your own as I take a quick sip from my soda. Actually, as I finish off my soda, I usually don't have to explain the importance of the class that much. I think people even who come into the class with some nervousness or, um, I don't want to say defiance, that's too strong, but reservations, right? Um, it's usually because they've had bad experience in past English classes or in past English classes they felt like they were being treated unfairly or they were being treated as if they were less knowledgeable, right? They're like carrying that baggage over into this class. I don't think I have to explain to people the importance of being able to communicate well, both in writing and in speech. As I always say, point to a person who's amazingly successful and cannot write or speak. Like, it's it's almost impossible. Even people who are like celebrities, yeah, even the, the really, really successful ones, they're usually much smarter than you think. <laughs> like musicians and such, right? Um, sometimes people get a bad rap or something, but no, they're usually pretty, pretty sharp people. Um, so yeah, I don't really have to convince people that the importance of writing or speaking can help you a lot in life. It can help you when it comes to time for searching for a job because you usually have to write materials like a resume and cover letter. Um, it helps with the interviews, of course, because you'll have to speak on the spot. Um, so yeah, I think everybody kind of knows the importance and intuitively understand its, its importance. Uh, but yeah, usually past experiences or because you chose it full sale because we're not a traditional university. So sometimes people say, why do I have to take this class? And my simple answer is, you know, <laughs> you do know. <laughs> that you'll probably go a lot farther if you can communicate and write well. I should say that writing is not a born skill. It's not like some people have it or some people don't. It's not as if some people are prodigies and they just can write from the earliest time they can remember and some people can't. No. Anybody, no matter how, no matter what their starting level, can improve a lot. Um, it takes time. It takes dedication. But, yeah, anybody can improve. So what are we going to be focusing on writing-wise this month? The picture you see here kind of hints at it. This this month you are going to write a single essay. Yes, just one essay. But we are going to work towards the creation of that essay by going step by step. And you will produce an ad analysis essay. Okay, Ads are all around us. The choice is, uh, the, the task is pretty simple. You will choose an ad from an approved list, so you don't get to choose your own ad. Um, and produce a short ad analysis essay. So I guess I should show you that in week one, this is the major, first major assignment we're working toward. So let's take a look at that. And it's here that you see the list of approved ads. Okay, so if we scroll down, you can read all this on your own. Here we go. <clears throat> so you have, what, three, four, five, eight ads to choose from. The first five are television commercials. The final three are print ads. Um, I recommend that you do not choose an ad until after you've viewed this lecture, okay? Because some people say, oh, I love Apple. I have an iPhone, I have an iPad, I'm going to choose Apple. Then they choose the ad and they don't really know what to say about it. Um, so yes, we're going to talk about ad analysis. We're going to brainstorm a bit by looking at some sample ads. And you should, by the end of this hour, feel much more comfortable with the concept of ad analysis. Then go back to this list and choose an ad based on not whether you like McDonald's or Call of Duty or Apple, but based on an ad where you can see things, okay? Because again, we're going to practice in a little bit. Um, so you should choose an ad where you definitely can spot some things going on. Because uh, yeah, you don't want to get trapped with this ad, which you are going to use all month, and then not know what to do about it. Like I can tell you right off the bat that print ads are more challenging. Okay, I love them, some other people love them, but print ads, you have to be comfortable discussing visual elements because print ads are entirely visual. Commercials have sound, they have movement, they sometimes have stories or plots. Print ads are just the image. Okay, So on some level, yes, you have to be comfortable discussing visual elements. I will say that I keep forgetting to remove the Chico the Stork ad every month. It is the most difficult ad in the bunch. I say that on purpose because every month there might be one or two people who hear that and say, well, I'm going to take that challenge. <clears throat> But I would say stay away from it if you're not sure what to say about an ad like this. Um, okay. 
So yeah, this is the most difficult ad. The good news is the, the one or two people who do tackle it usually do a pretty excellent job because they, they know what they're in for. They watch the first lecture. Um, they don't just choose it at random. The people who choose it at random, I end up almost always saying, why did you choose that ad? <laughs> Didn't you watch the first lecture where I said that is the most difficult ad in the bunch? Or when I said that print ads are more difficult than television commercials? Um, so yes, but you're here, those of us who are present. Oh, we have more people with us now. Welcome, Ian, Melody, uh, Miss Anderson. Okay, we have seven people, six people with us now. Okay, we start off with three. Um, those of you who kind of came in late, you will have to maybe watch the recording of this video and see the stuff that you missed. Um, but okay, so here's the approved list of ads. So let's talk a little bit more about this and do some practice. Okay, this we've already talked about ad analysis. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're fundamentally looking at the question of how do advertisers, advertisers persuade their audiences. Um, another way to think about this is just as you might lift up the hood of a car to see the machinery underneath and see how the car operates, you're doing the same thing with your chosen advertisements. And so there's going to be there are going to be some concepts that I really just beat home like a like a broken record all month. Okay, and one I'm going to mention now is that you have to spot three things going on in the ad three moves that the ad makes. Okay, I'll use that word a lot too, moves. Sometimes I'll refer to strategies or techniques, but I like saying three moves that the ad makes. After all, um, companies turn to ad agencies, paying them millions of dollars to create ads. So no detail in an ad is accidental. So I want to implant that idea in your head right now is that you, yeah, you have to be able to identify three moves that the ad makes. Okay, you know, why this color? Why this music? Why this? Why that? Essentially, ad analysis is about answering the question why. Okay, answering that question why leads to analysis. So, ad analysis is not ad summary. We're not going to just summarize the ad. It's not ad description. Same thing. We're not just going to describe what happens in the ad. It's also not ad explication, which sounds confusing because ad explication kind of sounds like maybe that's analysis because you're explaining things. But by ad explication, I just mean explaining what the ad is about like to another person who's never seen it. Again, these are all kind of in the category of summary, overview, description, not analysis. Analysis means making, taking a very close look at the ad and pinpointing three specific, interesting and important, hopefully, moves that the ad makes and discussing why from the ad's creator's positions, they made those choices, okay? Because again, no choice in an ad is accidental. This class is built around the writing process, which you have this little graphic here. So week one, we're here in brainstorming. The major activity for this week is to complete a worksheet, which we'll take a look at toward the end of this lecture. Next week, we'll kind of be in these two legs here, researching and investigating. Yes, you will have to do some research for this paper. Uh, the week two assignment is an outline. Okay, so we'll also be looking at organizing your information. I think it's the outline that you will have an extra week to work on because at the end of week two, then we'll have spring break. I wonder if I have that backwards or is it what's normally week four at spring break? Now I'll have to look at it. Anyway, the week after that, you will write a draft of your essay. You'll get feedback both from me. You'll always get feedback from me on all of your assignments, but specifically here, the essay draft plus two of your peers. Okay. There will be a peer review activity in week four. Um, and so, yeah, each week is devoted to a different stage in the process, which is also explained here. I'm going to fly past this. Oops. We are going to look at this ad in a second. But first, let me say, OK, when I said think in terms of threes, OK, each of you will have to choose an ad and spot three things going on, three moves that the ad makes. It might be helpful to think of these techniques, these three moves that an ad makes. There are more than just three. I'm just saying you have to be able to find three. Um, to think in terms of like the general categories of formal qualities. So this is like technical stuff, right? The nuts and bolts like color, sound, music, camera work, etc. And then thematic qualities. So this is the non-technical stuff. These are issues of theme, motif, character, story, if the ad has kind of tells a story, um, etc. For example, one of the print ads, I won't say which one, uh, plays deeply with the theme or the idea of nostalgia. Okay, It's playing really powerfully upon that idea. So that would fall more in this area. Whereas if you're literally doing a discussion of the ad's use of color, 
that would be kind of your formal quality, technical quality. So let me get back to that last slide because I want to start looking at ads. This happens every month. I can't get back to it. Hold on. Oops. Well, we don't want that one. There we go. Okay, so this is an ad for Jeep. Now, you don't see both halves at the same time. This is just showing you the visual trick. Normally, you only see what's on the left side. Okay, so it looks like a giraffe's head. It has the word Jeep. And then I don't know if you can see that clearly, but it says, see whatever you want to see. And it's written right side up in a slight curve above the image and upside down underneath the image, which that upside down quality probably leads you to kind of tilt your head and notice that, yeah, looked at one way as a giraffe's head, looked at another way, it's a standing penguin. Okay, nifty little trick there. Uh, but normally you would only see like this half. Now, even though you're not experts in ad analysis, even though this is the very first lecture of the month, think of what we just talked in terms of technical qualities, non-technical qualities. What are three things we would notice here? It's an incredibly spare ad, right? There's not that much going on. But what are three things we could notice? And don't worry about correctness so far. Just mention stuff in the chat. Like, what are three things we could discuss with some detail? that would lead us to hopefully an interesting place. Remember, ad analysis is about answering the question why. So what are some things going on in this ad that we could ask questions about? Like why this, <clears throat> fill in the blank, or why this, who wants to take a stab? Again, don't worry about right or wrong, just, if it says the contrast, okay, but the contrast between what, I'm not sure. And other people can still chime in as well. Like imagine that this is one of the ads you could choose from. And I've already told you, you have to be able to spot three things that you could talk about in this ad. Um, what might we focus on? Ian says, the demand of engagement, the cost of the ad itself is interesting and vague enough to read you in. I mean, okay, Ian, all that's great, but I'm gonna be the mean instructor and say that you're kind of explaining the ad. Like you're discussing why it's interesting. Um, I want you to be much more specific than that. It's again, we're kind of lifting up the hood on the ad. We're, we're thinking like the ads creators. We have to design an ad. What are the design choices? Again, they don't have to always be technical. They can also be thematic. They can be choices made in terms of theme or in terms of story. This is a print ad though. So again, as I said earlier, print ads mean you have to be comfortable discussing visuals. Uh, Hibba says like the lighting, the contrast is dark. Okay. Um, there's, there's certainly like there's a darkening at the, the four corners here, right? And it's lighter in the center. That's not accident. It's a technique that's often used in advertising to draw your gaze toward the center. I don't know if that's the contrast Hibbo is talking about, or there's also contrast with the image itself against the beige background. Okay. Yeah. Melody and Angeliana. Good. Let's take those in order, because I think those are both important. So Jillianna says, the background is a muted color, but texture to keep it from being plain. Great. But here's the thing. I would say that there's, why isn't this a blue background that's textured? Or even light blue, right? It could be light blue for, for the contrast thing they have erased. Why is it this beige color? Uh, why this kind of fabric-y, textile-y type thing? Like, why would that be chosen here? Just because it looks nice? Or is there a reason why this ad might go for this color scheme and this texture background? Okay, great, Giuliano. Jeep, right? What's the stereotypical image of Jeep? It's rugged, it's independent, it's for off-roading, it's for adventure. And notice the color here. It's, it's not just beige, but it's got this kind of burlap quality, right? Kind of like burlap or canvas or khaki clothing. Uh, I would suggest that's not accidents. Okay, that this wouldn't work as well if it were a Lexus ad or a Toyota ad. Like it fits Jeep somehow, right? Because what do you use Jeep uh, for? Again, for like independence, adventure. I mean, that's not really what most people use it for. Most people use it to haul kids and pick up groceries. <laughs> but the image of Jeep is that it's like the safari vehicle. It's the vehicle where you get off the highway and bump your way along dirt roads and snaking mountain uh, bends, right? And so maybe this color, which is also reminiscent of, again, things we usually associate with the outdoors, a burlap sack, 
canvas, right? Canvas tent or the canvas top of a Jeep or khaki clothing. Um, does this make sense to people though? Because this is what you're going to have to do with your chosen ad. And if you're panicking, first of all, it's not as difficult as it seems. Um, you don't have to, I'm not looking for like deep interpretive read between the lines things. Um, no, I'm not saying, well, the color is kind of like sand and Moses, wasn't he in the desert? So maybe this is a biblical, no, 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 you don't have to do anything like that. <laughs> Lots of times you're just spotting things that are pretty darn obvious, but explaining to the reader, like the average person would probably look at this ad and never make the connection that this color and this kind of textile background has a meaning behind it or right it wasn't just decided at random and so i would go back to melody's thing where she said why these animals okay why animal imagery why isn't this a i don't know a different kind of reversible image looked at in one way it's a wine bottle looked at another way it's a telescope or uh, why animals i think we've probably kind of also answered that as well right Again, it's Jeep. What kind of uh, vehicle would you use to go to the Serengeti in Africa and maybe look at giraffes up close? Or maybe head to the tip of South America, Tierra del Fuego, to see penguins up close? True, you could do it in a Toyota pickup. You could do it in a number of cars. But stereotypically, we think of Jeep as like the safari vehicle, the off-roading vehicle, right? I mean, I think the other connection Jeep often has is the military. Uh, but here it's definitely playing with the idea of Jeep as being the kind of vehicle you would use to see these types of animals. And it reinforces that with this, yeah, sort of uh, earth tone background that has this kind of burlap textured quality to it. So is this making sense to people? That this is a sort of level you have to be able to look at your ad in? Um, by the way, this is one of the more difficult types of ads. Okay, It's a print ad. So remember, a print ad requires one to be more comfortable with visual elements. The other ads, especially the television commercials, there will be things like sound, music. Like those of you who choose the Call of Duty ad, I'll already point you in one interesting direction to get you a head start. The song it uses in that ad is not accident. It wasn't just chosen because it's a popular song or it's upbeat. That's part of it. But there's a reason why that song was chosen. Okay, so again, think why. Why, why, why? Why this color? And actually, that's how I'd ask you to look at your ads, okay? Spot things and say, why? Why this? Why that? Uh, the McDonald's ad has six or seven different things going on in it. Um, and by the way, you have a week one worksheet where you'll practice these things, but I will help. Like, I don't let people struggle. <laughs> if people are having trouble spotting three things, I will give them a list and say, choose three. <laughs> Hopefully it's three things that after they've been pointed out to them, they go, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Sure, I could write about that. Um, let's take a look at another ad. Um, this is obviously an older ad, but I still like to use it because, A, there's a lot of things going on. B, there are retro ads. Like, this could be an ad from today, right? Because, you know, there's that whole trend of making ads that look like they take place in the 80s or the 70s. Uh, but this, yeah, this actually is an ad from the early 1970s. So now that you are becoming pros at this, you did a good job with the Jeep ad, start shouting out things here. And you don't have to, again, don't worry about right or wrong. You, you have to spot three things, at least three things, that come essay time, although that's going to be in week three that we actually get to the essay. But this is what we're building towards, by the way. We're building toward an ad. Actually, you know what? I'm going to show you. You won't see this until week three. Okay, but I'm going to show it to you now. I did all the assignments for this class. Oh, I did two of the assignments for this class. So the Jeep ad we just looked at. By the way, there are other versions of that Jeep ad. So um, here's one that looked at it one way. It looks like a doe, right? A female deer head. Or maybe it's a young deer. Uh, and looked at another way, it's a seal. And here's another one. Where I looked at one way, it's an elephant, and upside down, it's a turkey, I guess. Right? So it's part of a series. Um, but yeah, I wrote an ad analysis essay. So I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, so don't panic, okay? I'm just showing this for fun. Um, it says Jane student. That's just me being silly. That's actually me. And writing the paper, it's always useful, I think, to do the assignments you ask your students to do because, one, you, you, you see what it's like to do the assignment. And second, you get a reminder of how anytime you have to write something, yeah, it's a challenge. <laughs> so we'll talk about some of these other things in future 
weeks, like next week, we'll talk about the introduction. But I have a long introduction that kind of sets things up. Um, and we'll talk about this later in this lecture, a thesis. But here are the three things that I noticed. Okay, Color. So you guys already mentioned that. Playful imagery, so that animal imagery. Okay, And uh, I focus on the tagline. It's a little bit difficult to explain because on the one hand, just explain the tagline, see whatever you want to see. Like if you just say, like if you just say the tagline, tagline is X and here's what it means, well, people can already see clearly what it means. <laughs> right, so I did something a bit more with it. I didn't just explain what the tagline is. But anyway, those are the three things I noticed. Okay, and the three things that you noticed are going to become paragraphs all on their own come essay time. So here's an entire paragraph about the ads use of color where I explained that the background is camel mesh, and that the beige background reminds people of fabric and textiles, burlap, canvas, khaki, okay, that the color is an earth tone. Then I, I talk about the ads uh, playful imagery or the animal imagery, okay? Only such an automobile's Jeep could take one on a journey to the heart of, Af of the African plain or the rocky tip of Tierra del Fuego to see giraffes and penguins up close. Okay, so anyway, and you will have this essay in week three as an example, uh, but this is what we're working toward, okay? So you, you, you're you going to have to do the same thing, be able to spot three interesting things going on in your ad. But if we go back to the lecture thing, what are some interesting things going on here? Okay, again, don't worry so much about right or wrong. Think about, you have to be able to spot at least three things and think of that those broad categories. We can try to identify technical things or non-technical things, but again, this is another print ad. After this, we will look at a commercial, okay? But start shouting out ideas in the chat. Even if you're not sure what the answer is, okay? Ad analysis is about answering the question why. Still, shout out things that you think might be important. Hibba says the caption makes you wonder if they're talking about the car or the woman in front of the car. Okay, yeah, 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 good. Because what is it that your mother wouldn't like? It's both of these things. It's the stereotypical mother, the mother who would disapprove. The the ad is clearly aimed at men, right? Uh, maybe even stereotypically, the men who are going through a middle age crisis, where they would want to drive a car like this and be with a woman like this to validate their long gone youth. <laughs> but yeah, even if it's not that, still it's that idea of your stereotypical mother would not approve of this car because it's fast, it's flashy, and that the woman maybe is interpreted as such, even though she looks like a normal person to me. But yeah, maybe the mother has stereotypical ideas of what such a car means and what such a woman means. But that would be appealing to the target audience who feels like, ooh, if I get in this car, maybe I could be with this kind of woman, right? So it, it appeals to that kind of viewer. Uh, Melody says nightlife theme. Yeah, definitely, right? Like, why is it set during this time period? Okay. Like, how does the image change if it's just a bright blue sky and it's clearly daytime, right? There's something about the nightlife environment that reinforces this image your mother wouldn't like. Uh, Juliana says it will make you cool. Okay, but remember, we have to spot three very specific things. With the Jeep ad, we spotted color. We spotted the animal imagery, and I mentioned also the tagline. In this one, I think we have more things going on. So, uh, I mean, I'll wait a little bit, but I don't want to be the instructor who forces people to come up with the quote-unquote right answers. I can chime in if it helps, but I do love it when people spot different things. Okay, nice. Good, Ian. Color, lighting, right? Like, look at these colors. Reds, oranges, colors that are what? Sensual? Maybe lurid is too strong a term, but definitely sensual. Warm, sensual. Uh, yeah, good. Ian. Sensual, bold, intense. Yeah, awesome. And that's not an accident. The entire ad is in these warms and oranges, and excuse me, reds and oranges that are kind of like bold. Uh, yes, sensual. Uh, yeah, and good, Ian. The, the lighting also makes it sort of dreamy, and it reinforces that night time image that Melody mentioned. And none of this is accident. It wants to create an environment that is, again, it's appealing almost entirely to men who want to be, I guess, if they buy this car, the kind of 
cool guy who can head out into the night, right? The things your mother wouldn't approve of. Being out at night, being out with this kind of woman, driving this kind of car. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very kind of urban look, and it's playing on that idea, the nightlife. Your stereotypical mother would not be out in this environment. Uh, but yeah, okay, we've noticed lots of things. I'll mention a few more within the environment. Like, you can see the movie is a little bit cut off here. It says Marlon Brando, and the title is cut off. But here you see it. It's Last Tango in Paris. I don't know if anybody else here is a movie buff like I am. But that's not an accident either. Last Tango in Paris is, it was a movie nominated for Best Picture. It's a terrific movie, but it's also incredibly sexually frank. It received an X rating when it came out. So yes, an X rated movie that was actually nominated for Academy Awards. But yes, it is, even by today's standards, incredibly sexually frank. That's not an accident either, okay? That it's in front of this movie theater. It's not showing a Disney film. It's not just showing a popular romantic comedy of the time. Um, no, it's Last Tango in Paris. So yes, we can mention lots of things. And as I think Hibba mentioned at the beginning, yeah, there's the tagline, but there's also the woman, right? The woman and the car, or the car. They are both front and center, because that's what's privileged in this picture. Layout is also a uh, thing you can look at, like where items are placed. So here it's the woman in the car, so we make a connection between the woman and the car. And the woman herself, right? She's not... She's not wearing a poodle skirt and uh, saddle shoes, although I think that's the 1950s, not the 1970s. She is definitely, for the times, a progressive woman, right? She's brawless. All these things, these aren't, this isn't accidental. They didn't just find a, a sweet woman who just got off work wearing a business dress and put her in front of this car. No, they picked this woman, okay? Um and Hibba says, even though she's fully clothed, she's kind of provocative. Yes, exactly. If I were writing an essay, I would word it just like that. Okay, The car and the woman are at least stereotypically provocative. Like, I don't think the woman is provocative, but the ad is definitely making that connection. Um, so, yeah, we got a million things we could say here. We could focus on just three things, color, lighting, and, I don't know, the privileging of putting the woman in the car front and center. We could talk about color, lighting, and the overall nightlife environments. We could talk about tagline, um, environments. Uh, do you see what I'm saying? We have already like four or five really good ideas that we could play with. You would just have to choose if you were writing an essay about this ad, um, which three things you would write about. Even this guy here, like it looks like he's looking at them, either the car or the woman or both, but that's interesting. Um, so, yeah, lots of things are going on in ads, and it's not accidental. Okay, we have one more ad to look at. Actually, this URL no longer works, so let me give you the URL in your chat. And please, if you're able to, either on your computer or your tablet, watch this briefly, and then we'll talk about it. So I'll give you 15 seconds, 30, 20 seconds. Okay, same deal. I'm trying not to talk in case people just loaded the video. It's a really short ad. It's only 15 seconds. The problem is I'm having audio trouble, so I can't really play this ad with sound. I'm going to let it play silently, but those of you who are able to watch the ad just now in sound um, on your device, again, same thing. Start shouting out in the chat what stands out to you. And think in terms of moves. Like you're you're the you're part of the creative team that that came up with this ad. What are three interesting things you and your creative team did, decided upon? Okay, so I'm hearing good things in the chat. I'm just going to push you to be more specific. Melody says the size of glass and how much the ice they put in it. Okay, but <clears throat> I think there's something more. You're, you're like on the path or something really interesting, but I don't think it's just the glass and the amount of ice in it, right? Uh, 
Uh, Jillian says they make the drink attractive. Yes, absolutely. But how do they make it attractive? Hibba says it's cool and has sex appeal. How do they do that? I agree. Uh, Melly says how small the bottle is in comparison. Okay. But again, come essay time, what would you, you have to, here's the thing. Uh, you'll, you'll choose three things to write about. In each of those three things, you'll have to discuss for an entire paragraph. So could you write an entire paragraph about how it's a tall glass filled with ice and the Coke bottle beside it is smaller? Like, will you get an entire paragraph's worth out of it? That's why I say that it can't, it has to be three things that lead you toward a discussion. Like here, uh, ah, I closed it. <laughs> Where's my Jeep essay again? Okay, so you'll have to be able to come essay time, right? So like here, I got an entire paragraph of the Jeep ads color and background, right? So I explain, here's a topic sentence, identifying color as a topic. I explain how color works in the ad. That takes a little bit of time. Then I explain the color choice is no accident for it reinforces the Jeep's outdoorsy image. I find some quotations that support what I have to say, like that earth tones are usually for backgrounds and that earth tones are the epitome of nature, which fits the Jeep ad perfectly. And then a kind of central line. If the color is used to promote the rugged off-roading image that the ad clearly desires. Okay, so can you get an entire paragraph out of it's a tall glass with ice and the bottle looks smaller? Okay, good. Hibba says the music. Close up of the soda. Good. And Juliana says the same thing. The music and the panel view used. I think you mean like panning, right? So let me type that. Right, so camera panning. Here, let me show the beginning of the ad again. Where do we usually see this kind of camera work? Like, how do we know that this is playing on ideas of sex? Right. Definitely the music, right? Because the music is that kind of funky waka waka. <laughs> it's like a send up. It's like a humorous uh, winking toward what people think of as sexual music. Some people have said it's kind of like Barry White's, or some people have even said it's like the bad music you hear in an adult movie. Uh, either way, still, it's playing on ideas of like sex music, right? Either sexy music or sex music. Uh, Savannah says, tall, dark, and handsome being shown visually with a drink. Yeah, good, good, good. Tall, dark, and handsome, we usually refer to that as uh, a man's strongest physical features, right? That if he's tall, dark, and handsome, he must be terrific. But here's not a man. It's the tall, dark, and handsome Diet Coke class. Um, Diet Coke is, yes, almost entirely aimed at women. Coke Zero, all those Zero products were invented for a diet uh, soda to be aimed at men. Because I guess men often don't want to drink Diet Coke, but Coke Zero does appeal to men. Um, not exclusively. I do drink Diet Coke, and I'm sure there are women who drink Coke Zero. Uh, but anyway, yeah, the, the ad is probably primarily aimed at women, so they're going to play on the tall, dark, and handsome thing. Here's not a man. It is a tall, dark glass of Diet Coke. Um, but anyway, where do we see this panning usually? In movies, right? It's almost always a woman, but she's her body is panned, f usually from the ankle up, because it's almost like a reverse striptease. You start at the ankles, work your way up, and then you eventually see her face. Um, uh, the times where it is a man, it's rare, but it, that's usually because the filmmaker is kind of adventurous and is trying to reverse that trend, but it's almost entirely women who are scanned. Um, here, of course, it's it's doing the opposite. Um, it's not a literal man, but it's, again, the tall, dark, and handsome theme, and it's the glass that's being panned. Um, I don't know if people still know this movie, but have you ever heard of The Naked Gun? There's a scene there in which the female character, played by Priscilla Presley, the first time she walks into a room, the camera scans her starting at the ankles and going up except it keeps going and going and going so that her kneecaps like appear twice. <laughs> and yeah, that joke can't exist unless you've seen that, that move uh, done in lots of movies and television shows previously, the way that certain characters, especially female characters are scanned. Okay. The camera travels up their body in a kind of reverse strip tease here. It's being done, but with the glass, uh, Ian says the glass is literally beady with sweat, like a hunky dude. Yeah. Okay. Good. Definitely. Right. Um, and here's my argument. I think those of you who are able to watch it on your own devices with sound, like you know it's a humorous ad. 
even if it takes you a while to spit out these things with me, you do get that it's a that's an ad playing on sex. Okay. Um, but yeah, you just have to have it pointed out. And by the way, we've already pointed out three things, at least three things. Uh, music is definitely important here. Um, the camera work, okay, that decision to pan the glass is uh, something. The decision to use as a tagline, tall, dark, and handsome, is important. Um, and yeah, I guess, you know, there are other things you could. Ah, I'm trying to skip ahead in the ad. Right? I mean, I guess you could get into a discussion of like color. Right, how the red stands out against this background, or how the coke stands out against this background, um, it has this kind of burnished metal look, or no, no, not burnished, brushed metal look, right? Like almost, it's popular with tech items, but here it's not a tech item, but maybe that's hinting at Diet Coke and how sleek and how slim it is, and how that's even being represented in the spareness of this image, right? Where it's just the glass, the coke bottle. Very little wording against this kind of brushed metal background. Um, so yeah, maybe you could do something with that as well. Are people getting the, the hang of this though? That when it comes to your chosen ad, so you have eight ads to choose from. Now go through all these ads and choose one not based on how much you love Call of Duty or how much you love Apple, <laughs> but based on which ad you can spot lots of things going on. Even if you can't put an answer to it, if you can at least sense like, I, I think there's a lot of things going on here. I will tell you that McDonald's and Call of Duty are probably easier for commercials. Apple, people love Apple, so they, gra they gravitate toward it, but it's probably a bit more challenging than the others. Um, I love print ads because I love just the challenge of looking at a print ad and figuring out what should we say about, for example, this. And of course, right now it's going to take forever to load. Right? Powerful image, but like, what would we focus on here? I'm not going to ask you to give ideas because someone might choose this ad and we're not going to give away the quote unquote answers during this session. Um, anyway, I promise to keep things to, to an hour, but I do have to quickly go over some final things. Okay. So let me, let's see. Oh man, I needed that thing open again. Okay. So here. Your first major assignment is to complete a worksheet. If you scroll down, uh, here it says preparing to write worksheet. Use this to complete the assignments. So let's open that. Okay, you just have to go through this. A lot of this is self-explanatory. Like, what is the title of your ad? Um, who made it? Uh, describe the ad as if you're explaining its visuals to someone who's never seen it before. But also, just don't answer the bolded part. Some people do a great job of describing the ad, summarizing it, but they forget to include important details that stand out, such as color, uh, yeah, color layouts, you know, use of space, uh, lighting, sound, music, camera movement, etc. Because these things that you notice while you're describing the ad then get interpreted here when it says, explain why these details matter. Um, you have an example of a completed worksheet. See, it says, click this link to view an example worksheet. And this is on the Diet Coke ad. So you can see there's the title of the ad, Tall Dark and Handsome. The ad was created for Coca-Cola. That's not being answered completely because it asks for more information than just the company. Here's her summary. It's a little bit short, but she does do a good job summarizing it and mentioning important things such as the retro looking font, the camera panning, uh, the background. Um, the music, right? Uh, it sounds like jazzy and funky, like the music you might hear. And so she's mentioned so many things that then here she can explain them. Everything in the ad reminds me of a sex scene in a movie. The music the music has a sexy vibe. The words used to describe the drink could be used to describe a good-looking man. The camera even moves up the glass like it might move up a person's body. The ad's a message seems to be that the Diet Coke ad is, uh, or excuse me, that Diet Coke is as good as a sexy romantic partner. Um, and I'll just stick with this since it's the exact same questions. Uh, what product is the ad selling? Okay, that's easy. Yeah, most of it's easy. The only th one that gives people trouble are number eight, where it says list three possible tactics techniques. That's just a fancy way of saying what three things have you noticed, okay? What three moves have you noticed? So for Jeep, it would be uh, the ad's choice of color, the ad's use of animal imagery, the ad's tagline. and I don't really care if you put it, if it's a pathos appeal because we haven't talked about that pathos ethos and logos. Just list your three things, <laughs> and here 
you have to write thesis statements. Okay, so that's the last thing we need to talk about. Because um, what is a thesis statement? Because the worksheet asks for them. Um, and finally, it asks for research ideas. Lots of students get confused on this one. It says, your essay must incorporate research. And students, for some reason, reason uh, some reason read this as they must write an essay here. No, 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 no. You just have to come up with research ideas. Okay, so I for the cheap ad, I would say maybe I would do some research into color theory. Um, it's the things like that, okay? So again, you have a sample to look at. So she lists some keywords she could look at for like, example, cinematography, uh, music and advertising, um, and some general thoughts about what she might research. Now, the last thing I need to cover, and I'll actually skip a few slides so we can get to it, because we've covered the most important stuff, is thesis statements. Okay. A thesis is like the roadmap to your paper. It is a single sentence, usually a single sentence, um, that tells readers where your paper is going. And this is why I keep repeating, you need to spot three things, because those three things are going to be listed in your thesis. So here's some thesis examples. First, the Jeep ad. Through the use of simple color, one. Playful imagery, two. And a double meaning tagline, tagline that reinforces theme, three. Jeep see whatever you want to see ad appeals to the uh, adventure inside everyone to unlock a hidden enthusiasm for Jeep, okay? So that's what you're doing. Here's the Diet, here's the thesis for Diet Coke. The Diet Coke Tall, Dark, and Handsome ad uses sexually charged language, one. In other words, that tall, dark, and handsome stuff. Seductive music, two. And slow camera movement, three. To convince sophisticated women to buy into the idea that drinking Diet Coke is as fulfilling as a heteronormative romance. Fancy speak for relationship, relationship between men and women. And if I could real quickly, do I still have my Jeep essay open? Here. Okay, that's essentially what's going on here, okay? So the thesis is a single sentence. It's usually the final sentence of your introduction paragraph. Next week, we're gonna talk about the five paragraphs that you'll have in your essay. But for now, you just have to know that, yeah, the thesis is where you list your three discussion points, those three things that you've noticed, because they will be used to set up the next three paragraphs in your paper, where you will first discuss your the first thing you've noticed in detail. Then you move on to the second thing you noticed in detail. Then the third thing, or a real simple way to look at this is that a thesis at its most basic says something like the blank ad uses blank, blank, and blank in order to blank. Now that sounds convoluted, <laughs> but you can see how simple it is, right? The Jeep ad uses color, uh, imagery, and tagline in order to convince uh, Jeep enthusiasts to, I can keep typing, but you get the gist of it, okay? The, here's the name of the ad, the McDonald's ad, the Apple ad, uses these three things in order to, and you can see an example of that in the sample worksheet. Again, week three, you will see my Jeep essay in full. Actually, you'll see a peek at it next week because I create an outline based on the same topic. Here, let me close this. Um, and you do have, again, you have a completed worksheet. Uh, this is the blank one. Oh, and look, when it says, uh, now use the three things you listed to come up with two thesis statements, you have within the prompt the Diet Coke thesis and the Jeep thesis to remind you. Now, why do we ask for two attempts at the thesis? Because one might be better worded than the other. Or you might notice so many things, you're not sure which three are the best. So some appear in one thesis, some appear in another. And that's where I could say, I think these three are your strongest ideas. Please go with those and make sure they're in a single strong thesis moving forward. Uh, but basically, yeah, we want you to take two attempts at it. Um, notice, too, that the, the sample we just looked at, do I still have that open? Uh, analysis worksheet. Oh, that's a blank one. Oh yeah, I still, oh, I'm sorry, it's here, okay. Her effort is pretty good overall, but notice like her th first thesis here looks great. Her second one, it's not a thesis, or it's not a full thesis. She only lists one thing, minimalist design. It's almost like she's trying to summarize the ad as a whole. Um, she doesn't have three discussion points. So I would tell her, this looks great. Actually, this looks so great, you can move forward on this one. I would tell her this thesis though, this is not a thesis statement. I would tell her, look at the two examples you had in the prompt. 
I see that a lot because people look at the sample worksheet and think, oh, I got to write one like this, at least three things. And then I have to write one that doesn't. No, no, no. You're taking two stabs at like this version. Um, and then again, research ideas. So yeah, study the example. Don't forget that every activity in this class comes with a finished example. Um, but mostly, yeah, just make sure that based on this lecture that you really choose an ad that you are comfortable working with all month. Again, I won't leave anybody hanging. So those who are struggling to notice things, um, I'll come up with a list, right? For every ad, I have a list of things to consider. But I do want you to try your hardest first, okay? In other words, don't just blow off the worksheet and say, well, David's going to, that's my name, David's going to just give me ideas. No, I want to see you think things through first, okay? And then if you need help, or sometimes people spot two, have two great ideas, but they're struggling to come up with a third. Okay, questions, comments, anything. I went about five minutes over. I apologize for that. I really do try to keep things to exactly an hour. Um, but this is probably the longest lecture of the month. So if you are comfortable with what we've gone over, you don't have to stick around. I thank you for attending. I will see you next week at the same time. And I thank you so much for attending. I will hang out, though, for a little bit and answer questions if people have them. I hope I didn't rush through the end stuff too quickly. Thesis statements, the worksheets. Okay. You're welcome, people. Hiba, Ian, have a great week at all. Again, you don't have to stick around. Sometimes people do because they are curious to see if others have questions that get asked. In a moment, though, I may stop the recording. If nobody really have que has questions, it looks like everybody is disappearing. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now. <laughs>